Hey, go right ahead, Jacob. We're looking at this camera, CJ. All right, CJ, first question is coming from Jason Quick with The Athletic. Hey, CJ, can you maybe just describe where you're at mentally with everything that's been going on? Um, it was a, it's been a tough 2020, honestly, for me personally, for a lot of people uh, in the world in general. And uh, what's been happening, you know, lately, obviously, uh, with, with Jacob Blake and what happened in Milwaukee, and, uh, what's continued to happen to, to black unarmed men, black and brown unarmed men and women um, in America, it's really sad and it's disheartening. And it definitely affects your mood. It affects how you feel from a day-to-day -day standpoint. And quite frankly, it's hard to, to really focus on your job, but I think these last few days we've had time to kind of reflect, um, kind of figure out how we can do better individually, um, collectively as a unit, you know, between players, the MBPA, the NBA, uh, ownership groups, management. We've all had time to kind of come together and that was our job. That was our job originally. What we wanted to accomplish was to create change, to continue to create a positive impact on society and continue to spread the movement by saying her name and, and speaking out on all these things. And I think we kind of got lost. Um, heard PG talk about you know what he was going through mentally a lot of guys being in a bubble it's been it's been hard it's been difficult we play games every other day and I think to, to be able to have those days to kind of strategize and, and plot and plan I think it was helpful and uh, we, we stood behind the Milwaukee Bucks and continue to stand behind them and uh, we're, we're really happy with what we, we were able to come up with in those 48 hours in terms of, of change that we can make um, starting tomorrow especially starting with voting and then looking at um, the qualified immunity and some of the different things that are out there, the George Floyd bill, uh, some of those things that we can make more people aware of going forward. So I'm, I'm in a, I'm in an, uh, a difficult space mentally, just like the rest of the world and the rest of the African-Americans that are here. But uh, at the same time, uh, I'm trying to get through it just like everybody else. Next question is coming from Aaron Ventress with the Oregonian. The Bucks reportedly got this rolling, but were you – are anyone on your team discussing maybe not playing even before the Bucks made their decision? It was discussed um, between a lot of different teams. I know being on the executive committee, I know the, the Boston Celtics, the Raptors, a lot of teams had discussed it. Uh, but up until that point, I don't think any affirmative action was in place. But you got to credit them for, you know, you know, starting the movement. And I think what they did sparked a lot of thought across America and across the, the rest of the world in terms of what's going on in America and, and how we can kind of look in the mirror and figure out individually, independently, how to strike the conversation and, and how to bring about some, some sort of change. Next question is coming from Casey Holdall with trailblazers.com. Hello, CJ. Uh, I'm curious, what, what's your, your personal opinion uh, about going on strike and, and just that that notion of, of needing to do something else to, to make your voice heard? Personally, I think what we were able to accomplish over the time made it worthwhile. We spread so much awareness, uh, so many different organizations and industries you know, joined in to continue to help spread the word and create awareness. I think a lot of times there's so many things going on, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives that we get lost. I'm, I'm not a I'm not a professional activist. I don't do this for a living, but I do care deeply about people and equality. So it's affected all of us. And I think you know, looking at what we were able to accomplish, was I in favor of, of leaving? No, I wasn't because I feel like we have a responsibility and an obligation to use our platforms, to take advantage of our situation as NBA players and to continue to try to push this game forward for the next generation while it's inspiring kids that come from our neighborhoods. If, if we would have voted to leave, I would have been on board with it because as a member of the executive committee, we have to do what's best for the masses. And in the event that the masses would have decided to leave, we would have done that. But I wanted to make sure everybody was educated on what exactly we were going to do if we left. We we're just going to go home, go back to the suburbs and, and enjoy enjoy the life we live. And we we're going to try to create some real impact by going to the front line. So that was more, more so my thing of if we do leave, what can we accomplish that we can't accomplish being here and, and having these platforms. And I think all in all, it was it was great to have the conversation. We probably should have had it 50 days ago when we first got here, but to have you know, the governors, to have the NBA, the MBPA, and so many different players able to express their feelings in a setting, I think it was, it was very needed and very beneficial for us as a collective. Next question is coming from Kyle Goon with Southern California News Group. Hey, CJ. Um, 
uh, obviously you talk about how, how proud you are of, of what was accomplished and, and what the group was able to come up with. Um, but obviously we, we've heard that, um, especially that Wednesday meeting was, um, you know, heated. There was a lot of emotions and, um, you know, the Lakers and Clippers were close to, to perhaps leaving the bubble or, or at least talking seriously about it. Um, how, how did you kind of deal with sort of the heat of those discussions and, and where, how was that resolved in your view? I think the biggest thing is you have to respect people's opinions and you can't tell people how they feel. I think that's first and foremost. Uh, everyone had a right to want to go home or has the right to want to go home. And you have to respect that decision. But I think that the biggest thing was understanding what was best for the collective, understanding what we can accomplish together as a group being here. Uh, the bubble has been proven to, to work so far in terms of our safety. So uh, although COVID is, is real and it's been affecting so many different people, we have been able to provide a, a safe space for players and staff alike. So we felt like being able to hear out everybody's reasons for why they would want to leave and what that looks like. And in the event that we would have voted on it and everyone would have decided to leave, we would have all left. So I think that's what people have to understand is that the Lakers and Clippers, you know, they were in the in the mind frame of, you know, wanting to take some time to kind of analyze the pros and cons and, and figure out what they wanted to accomplish. And uh, we were able to kind of collectively discuss a lot of different things. CP did a great job. I'm sure he hasn't slept in days like, like a lot of people uh, of organizing and continuing to strategize and hearing everyone out. Uh, Iguodala was, was was huge in that in that role, and you just have to credit everybody for, for being mature. Um, you're not going to always agree with each other. There's not going to always be uh, it's not going to always be great chemistry in a room. But I think all in all, we accomplished what we wanted to. We got a lot of things done, and the biggest thing we're looking forward to is continue to impact, have action, uh, trying to open up as many arenas as possible, practice facilities, to continue to protect uh, those who are, are facing voter suppression. Final questions coming from Dwight Jaynes, and then we'll have Carmelo Anthony next. CJ, several of the stories coming out of there mention your name in conjunction with uh, urging a plan to be in place and, and talking about needing a plan. I'm wondering how confident you are that there is that plan in place and whether you can give us some insight into what that might be. I'm extremely confident in the plan we have placed. Uh, we've talked to professionals and continue to work with professionals and we'll be hiring a third party who does this for a living to ensure that we're able to execute some of the things we put in place in terms of the voting. That's something we can act on right away. Uh, all the ownership groups are in contact with their counties trying to figure out what they can execute from a voting standpoint of opening up arenas or practice facilities or things of that nature. So that's one action that will directly impact thousands and thousands of people and give them access to voting. Um, some of the other things that we're, we're implementing I'm sure you've seen that you've seen the press release, but it more so is consistent around spreading the message, taking advantage of ad space, you know, continuing to encourage people to vote, continue to encourage people um, to, to try to spread equality. And the coalition that we've been able to create is, is something that we're extremely proud of and, and continue to build. But remind you, we've only had 24 to 48 hours to really discuss these things and put the balls in motion. So it's gonna take some time. Change happens over time as we've seen, but uh, compared to where we were 30 years ago to today, we've definitely made strides and, and have a long, long ways to go. But we're happy we were able to kind of sit down and, and, and have those discussions because without the Milwaukee Bucks uh, deciding not to play and us standing behind them, I'm not sure we'd have these same activations in place and these same actionable ideas ready to be acted upon. Okay. Thank, Thank you, CJ. Appreciate it.